Hey, stop right there. I know you got the game. Where is it? I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm Don't just... you play games with me! I know you have Sonic here. That's the only thing Sonic fans care about! Even if I had Sonic Frontiers, I wouldn't give it up. That's the only game that's giving Sonic fans hope. They've had bad game after bad game for the last couple of years. And that's exactly why they can't have it! Okay? Okay, I got it right here. Just... Not worth it, I got it right here. I got it right here. Sonic 06! He releases that game to the public, the Sonic fans will get exactly what they want. This game better be a good one. Sonic the Hedgehog, the hedgehog that can really move, the same one with the attitude, has been running around since 1991. He was Sega's answer to Mario, and for a brief period of time, he gave Mario a run for his coins. Keyword brief. And now the two are playing Olympic games together. Good for them. But this story isn't about Mario. I know. Shocking, right? This is about Sonic. Now we all know that Sonic's jump to 3D is one of the most controversial topics in gaming. Some people love the 3D Sonic games while others prefer the 2D ones. But we can all agree that over the past five years, pretty much anything after Mania has been rough. Sonic Forces. Bad. Sonic Colors Ultimate. Bad. Sonic Origins. Bad. That one really made me sad, because I was looking forward to this. Anyway, things were looking pretty grim for Sonic fans. Minus all the media that is in video games, I heard the comics were really good, and I enjoyed both the movies. And there's a Netflix show coming out soon, but I'm getting off topic. Sonic fans all over were rather frustrated. New releases, instead of exciting, became a world of fear and dread. Until a game called Sonic Frontiers was announced. With a trailer showing off barely anything, we got word of a new Sonic game. As per usual, some people were excited. I was not. I haven't enjoyed 3D Sonic in a long time. I was worried. And I'm sure some people out there can agree. There were real reasons to be worried here. Later down the line, we got word that this was going to be an open world Sonic game. Now look, I don't know about you, but I'm getting sick of every game getting an open world treatment. Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild was a great game, but I prefer classic Zelda. And Bowser's Fury, while limited, I would prefer not to be the future of Mario. And maybe it's just me, but I don't really prefer open world games when compared to level based ones. Okay, hear me out. If you haven't figured it out already, most open world games are essentially a giant empty plane with a few big sections of stuff to do. I don't prefer this. I prefer levels because then you skip the mindless traveling in between areas. And sure, you can bring up fast travel, but one, not all games offer that, and two, isn't that ruining the point of the open world? It ends up just being you traveling from level to level. It kills the whole open world. So why don't we just get rid of what doesn't need to be there? Now yes, it can be done well and it can be fun. But not every game needs to be open world, but that's just my opinion. But an open world 3D Sonic is especially scary to me. If Sonic can't get linear 3D levels right, how on earth are they gonna get a massive world of them right? Not to mention the momentum. My favorite thing about classic Sonic games is the challenge comes from building up speed and trying to keep it, rather than hitting the Y button and breaking the sound barrier in less than half a second. But don't worry, all my fears were put to side when Sega let us know that Sonic Frontiers wasn't going to be open world. It's open zone. What's the difference? As the release of Sonic Frontiers crept up, fans didn't know what to think. Could this be it? Could this be the game that Sonic fans have been waiting for? Or was this another forces waiting to happen? Originally, I wasn't even gonna bother with this game. I can enjoy a Sonic game, but I don't need to play it unless it's traditional 2D. But when this game came out, I decided I could at least give it a try. So as we go, I'm gonna keep this spoiler free, so no worries there. I do have something I want to say about the story though. Don't worry, it's not a spoiler. 
But anyway, we all know I'm not here for the story, but it's always appreciated when a good one is there. I prefer gameplay over story, that's kind of my thing. But anyway, the story in Sonic Frontiers, while it is present, I couldn't tell you what was going on. From start to finish, stuff kind of just happens, it's weird, maybe it's just me, but I couldn't follow the story at all. Things just kind of happened and it just didn't make sense to me. But again, I'm not here for the story, so we'll shift into the more important part, the gameplay, the thing that we were all worried about. Now with the gameplay, there's a lot to unpack. We'll start out with the base movement options though. This is Boost Sonic, and there's no way of getting around that. The game makes it very clear from the get-go. Sonic can run, jump, double jump, drop dash, which if I remember correctly is not used once, attack, which we'll get into later, and boost. Well, without boost, Sonic is really slow. I found myself boosting pretty much the entire game because it gets kind of excruciating going from place to place at that speed. Thankfully, if you draw an infinite symbol, uh-oh. I'm sorry, anyway, if you draw an infinite symbol, you get infinite boost, which honestly came in handy a lot. Overall, the running in this game, it gets the job done. It's not the best way I think it could have been done, but it, it works, it works. But there isn't any momentum. For example, the minute you let go of the joystick, Sonic dead stops. No skid, no nothing, just stops in place. It feels a little uncomfortable, but you get used to it. But this isn't all Sonic can do in this game. Frontiers introduces the Psy Loop. I think that's what that's called. But this grants Sonic the power to use his speed to draw lines around his enemies to begin attacking. I actually really like this feature. It's something new and it fits right in with both this game and the Sonic series. Not only can you use it to attack enemies, but you can use it to find secrets and solve puzzles. Also, you can use it to draw whatever you want, so that's kind of fun. But then we get to the combat. So this game introduces a skill tree, which at first I thought was a weird choice, but as you go, it gets better. So it's a functioning skill tree. But when I started the game, I thought the combat was really bad, and in my defense, for a good while, all you can do is spam the Y button. And then you just spam the button until the enemy dies. That's not great. But as you go through the game and upgrade the skill tree, attacks start to grow more and get more satisfying to link up. It also tells you your combo count as you go, which I think is really neat and it's always fun to see. But to go with that combat, you have generic enemies, mini bosses, and big boss battles, which is gonna run us into a whole new direction. The enemies are all decent. They do the job. None of them are very memorable, but they do the job. I think in the enemy department, Sonic Frontiers really excels at mini bosses. Each location has a couple of mini bosses, all of which have unique attacks and unique ways to take them down. Some of these are really fun, and they all use Sonic movesets to better the experience. The mini bosses are some of my favorite part of this game. So we covered the enemies, the mini bosses, and that leaves us with the boss battles. I can say with all honesty that these are some of the worst boss battles I've ever encountered in a video game. So, in Sonic Frontiers is your goal to collect all the Chaos Emeralds to fight the boss of that island, and then move on to the next island and inevitably lose all the Chaos Emeralds again and go hunt for them once more. You need the Chaos Emeralds to fight each island boss though. Without that, Sonic is more useless than a Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games on the DS. But when you're Super Sonic, you lose rings every second, which means there's only a limited time to beat each boss, which normally wouldn't be too bad. But it's not really clear what to do to defeat the boss. These bosses explain nothing and make you confused the entire time. It took me a decent amount of tries before I even figured out what to do. Which, what you have to do is use the parry move that I always forget's in the game. The parry move, it's not great. You just hold it and you can parry any attack. But once you parry attack, you get your chance to attack the boss battle. Then you get a 30 second segment of garbage being thrown at the screen. Literally, I, I can't tell what's going on most of the time in these segments. Then you have to block his attack and then hit him again. It's it's just not great, because if you mess up once, you ju you're just dead. Might as well restart the boss battle at that point. But anyway, these boss battles really wouldn't be as bad if they were one, functional, and two, understandable, not extremely confusing. But to go with them, each boss battle plays a certain song, and I'm gonna be honest, I don't really like that song. And if I'm gonna be more honest, I think the music in Sonic Frontiers isn't that good. It's all sad piano stuff or intense vocal music, but none of the classic good old jazz from games like Lost Worlds. Probably shouldn't compare these two, but you understand. 
I was very much let down by the music in this game, and I can say that as a segue to another audio issue. Sonic's new voice is kind of weird, and I really hate it. It's the same guy as before, but he's going for a more serious tone, and it's just not good. Actually, now that I'm on the topic, this whole game goes for a more serious vibe, and I kind of hate it. I prefer Sonic in the funny green hill zone trying to stop Eggman from stuffing bunnies into egg robots. But I am one of those people who prefer not serious Sonic, so it really all comes down to preference here. This doesn't really hinder the gameplay. This is just kind of a personal opinion. But I feel like I'm being way too negative, because by all means, I don't hate Sonic Frontiers. There is good to this game. And I'll start right out with, I really like the open zones. Sonic Frontiers has five open zone islands because Sega really wants us to know it's different than open world. But each world is really fun to run around and they all are littered with obstacles. Some fun and some terrible, but running around in a plane this big is really fun and satisfying. I was initially worried about the open zone level design because honestly, level design in Sonic games has kind of been rough the last decade. But I can say I was pleasantly surprised. And while I really enjoy the open zone levels, there is a major flaw. This game is a step in the right direction for the Sonic series, yes, but it has no direction. And what I mean by that is it's so easy to get lost, whether you have the map or not. And most of the time there's a cursor that does tell you where to go, but some sections just don't have it all together. Now, normally this would be fine, but these levels do get old pretty fast. I mean, they're not bad, not at all. They just kinda, once you explore it all, that's it. To sum it all up though, each open zone is essentially a glorified Ohio every time. These locations are kind of bland and kind of boring. They don't make me want to see the next one. Honestly, I could care less. But at least the level design is pretty good. To go with the open zone worlds, we have the cyberspace levels. These are more similar to modern 3D Sonic games. These are linear levels that have Sonic sprinting from point A to point B collecting rings along the way. These levels are either really good or okay. But either way, these are honestly my favorite part of the game, and at the end of each level there are four achievements, and honestly this makes the cyberspace levels a blast to return to. The only thing about these is they repeat the same couple of level themes over and over again, which isn't really a bad thing, because the level design in these is, for the most part, pretty fun, but it would be nice to see a couple more level themes. Now, Sonic Frontiers released on multiple consoles. I have the Switch version, and I think I can say confidently that while the game runs and keeps up, the Switch isn't the definitive way to play this game, most notably the pop-in. Sonic Frontiers suffers heavily from pop-in issues. Normally this doesn't bother me too much, and it's not too terrible in Frontiers. My only problem with it is sometimes you need to get to a certain location, but you can't see the route and you have to go digging for it just to get the game to load it in. And that can be really frustrating at certain times. But to go with that, I will say my whole experience, as far as I can remember, I never had any frame rate issues. The game does a really good job at keeping up. I think it sacrificed the pop-in to keep the frame rate solid, and it works. It runs really well. Now, I know I've said a lot of negatives. Even when talking about the good, I do bring up negative points. And there's a reason for that. What I really want you to know is Sonic Frontiers does do a lot wrong, but it's not a bad video game. Honestly, the open world concept fits Sonic pretty well, and further down the road, I can see this being expanded upon and improved. And I know some of my opinions, like the music and the voice acting and the stories, may not be shared by you, and that's alright. But to wrap things up, here are my thoughts for someone looking to buy Sonic Frontiers. If you're a Sonic fan, you're gonna absolutely love this. This is the best 3D Sonic's been in a long time, and I can highly recommend this to any Sonic fan. But if you enjoy this series but aren't super into it like me, you'll enjoy the game. You won't love it, but you'll get some fun out of it. I'd recommend buying it if it goes on sale at some point. But yeah, this game was definitely tailor-made to Sonic fans. Even if the game was only okay to me, I'm very, very happy to those who love it. You deserve it, and it's about time you got a good Sonic game. I'm happy to see it. But to me, I think Sonic Frontiers is all right. It was kind of fun, it's not my favorite Sonic game, but you know, it was okay. But either way, Sonic Lost Worlds is one of my favorite Sonic games, so can you really trust my opinion on this topic? Thanks for watching though, you made it all the way to the end. Hey, Sonic Frontiers is only okay.
This is what the people want. No, it's not. 